Hey guys, how's it going? Mike Vasile here. In today's video, we're gonna go talk about the 10 best websites to make money online fast, and we're starting right now. Hey guys, how's it going? Mike Vasile here. Before we begin, I just want to remind you that several spots have opened for this week's free Ultimate Freedom Workshop where we teach people to turn their passions into a full-time online business. Okay, guys, this is literally like my third video that I do today. For some reason, I just thought it was like logical to do four videos a day from Sunday to Tuesday so I could just bulk everything. It's been pretty good, but other than that, like the content creation side of things have been pretty interesting because you know, by this time I'm making this video, it's just like whatever comes to the top of my mind, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. So if you don't like brutal authenticity, if you don't like the things that I'm just saying with pure radical honesty, instead of like filtering things and giving like a little nice script that I have to say to entertain you guys, like, like I said, this is like a long, day so far. Uh, but with that being said, I wanted to talk about the 10 best websites to make money online fast because like I said, a lot of people want to make money online. I mean, do you? Odds are you do because you clicked on this. So I'm assuming that you do. And onto that, like just Wi-Fi money is just pretty dope. Like if you've been following this channel for a while, you know it's a lot of me. Travel around the world, help my mom and dad, pay for my sister's college. So many things that I could do with making money online and I don't have to be in a physical location. Like so many people that are like, oh man, I have to go to this job where somebody tells me what I do, how much I'm worth, when I can eat, pee, sleep, and poop. And I'm like, that's not a life. That's not a life. So that's why I figure out a way to make money online by Googling a bunch of things that were idiotic and sifting through all of the BS, which is what I want to do for you today. So in today's video, I want to review what you're probably Googling out there and kind of just give you guys the direct to heart to heart truth on what it actually takes to make money with these websites. And what better way than going to money.usnews.com. So these are what a lot of people are looking for right now, right? So let's actually see how this blog is making money and if it's actually legit and what you could actually do. So the first thing that they talk about is Upwork. If you are a freelancer or you have become one due to losing a job, you might want to look around Upwork and look and see if anyone is hiring gigs that you would be good at. Second, digital marketing consultant in Henderson, Virginia has said that he has found a lot of work on Upwork. So actually look at Upwork and let me tell you the ups and downs of Upwork, okay? So as you can see, this is Upwork. There's so many different things. I'm gonna tell you this right now. This is where I go to to find a lot of marketing needs as well as getting people to help me write for my blog, right? Like if you look at my blog, oh my God, my nose is like really itchy. Uh, if you look at my blog, you'll see that there's a lot of articles on there. And sometimes I'll take like huge podcasts where I like interview people and I'm like, I don't wanna write this. So I'll literally go here and then get jobs for people to help me with my thing. The thing about Upwork is you got to understand we are in like this digital age now. Okay. That's what COVID and pandemic really had just speeding up. Right. I, it just blew my mind. Why did we have to go to school when all the things that my teacher's doing is just reading out of a freaking book? Right. Like why, why do I have to go to school if they're just, I have to spend a $700 book. And then th these teachers are literally just reading what's in this book. It's just ridiculous, right? And uh, when COVID and the pandemic happened and everyone started realizing, man, we need to use the internet for things. We need to use the internet for food, to get things, for education, for services, for jobs. Upwork has been like kind of like the go-to place for you to take the things that you already know and put yourself out there. Now, the thing about Upwork is you got to kind of like understand what it is in terms of, you know, like your place in the ecosystem of the online, online world. So in the physical world, the reason why you have to go and go to a college education is just so some big corporation can go and hire you. Just look it up. Okay, John D. Rockefeller, he's the one that kind of assembled the philosophy for the modern day uh, education system. And he said this, I do not want a nation of thinkers. I want a nation of workers. So if you think about this, you have this guy who's, um, you know, motivated to actually get a bunch of smart, obedient employees for all of their big industries and whatnot. And that's kind of like the entire uh, paradigm that we were in, in terms of like online jobs and whatnot, or not online jobs, but just like jobs, right? Like the industry, you, you look at uh, Henry Ford, he had the assembly line. He didn't want people to think, he just wanted people to kind of like do the exact same job over and over again. So that's kind of like the old way that, that's going on right now. Big greedy corporations trying to make people stupid enough to spend 40 to $60,000 a year like I did, like this idiot did, for a degree that he wasn't even gonna use for, 
right? Just so that they will be so much in debt where they are forced to work for your company for the rest of their life, thinking that they are winning, but they're always constantly in debt. That is the old paradigm of work. What are we moving into? What you see everything in the online world is really kind of being driven by online digital entrepreneurs. So you gotta ask yourself, do you wanna be like the digital entrepreneur that is going out there and creating? Or do you wanna be the person that supports the digital entrepreneur? Either way, there's no wrong answer because you're making money on the online world. You get to experience the freedom of not going to a cubicle, to being told when to eat, sleep, poop, and pee, and whatever, some ridiculous things like that. As long as you can provide value and consistently like apply what you are supposed to do, your tasks and getting them done, no one really cares how much you work. I remember when I first hired somebody on Upwork, uh, it was from the Philippines, I was paying them $800 a month and I didn't care how much hours they worked. All I cared about were, these were the objectives that I need to get done, go ahead and do them. We'll review them every single month and that's it. She could work as much as she wanted or she could work as little as she wanted. And Upwork is a good place to kind of find the entrepreneurs to then really go and hire you, right? Uh, so like I said, you just go in here and be like, yo, uh, freelance writer. Now, here's the thing that I will tell you about this because of the co the codemic, <laughs> the codemic, the panvid disease. Uh, because of this, there's a lot of people now going into this, right? Like look at this. Thailand, $44 an hour, $10,000 earned, $20,000 earned, $45 earned. What you guys got to realize is you're going to have to figure out how to deal with the competition. You know, everyone's like, oh, best money to make money online fast. That is good. But you guys got to realize that you can't just depend on Upwork to make your money, right? Even though this person made 10 grand, 20 grand, 10 grand, odds are, they're learning how to build a relationship with the clients that are paying them on Upwork to make a deal out of Upwork, right? That, that's literally it, right? Because of course, Upwork takes about like 10% of the entire transaction anyways. So what you guys got to realize if you are deciding to do into the Upwork realms of things is even though it could be a way to get like a stable online job, it's still like you still have to approach it in terms of like a business mind. Okay, you have to like think about, okay, well, Upwork is essentially like Google for people to go and hire me, right? People go on Google and they're like, how do I clean my feet? How do I, you know, carve an apple? How do I, you know, bake a potato? Um, is this like fungus, like a bad thing? Should I go to the doctor, right? And, and people go to Google to search for things. Well, you guys got to understand if you want to go make money online fast on Upwork, is Upwork isn't the end all be all. It's just the search engine to attract clients to you. And you gotta figure out how to distinguish yourself out of all these people. You might even have to charge less than everybody when you're just first getting started to uh, really attract people to come and you know get your services. Because why the hell would someone spend $100 an hour on you when this person's 45 and they've already made 20 grand and they had 100% job success, right? Like, like you have to figure out how you could distinguish yourself from the marketplace. You know, this is something that we talk about all the time in like my second channel. And that is your personality will really dictate your personal reality. And the people that want to make money online, they never actually have to have the hard conversation with themselves that they need to have to go ahead and, you know, actually attract clients that actually enjoy working for them or with them for extended periods of time. So that is Upwork right there in a nutshell. So let's actually go over the other one, Fiverr.com. Fiverr's like pretty dope, but it's the exact same problem that you're gonna experience uh, with Upwork. It's really just like the search engine to be found. Now I remember when I was like in Amazon FBA and I was like selling products on Amazon because I was like, oh, this is gonna be a good idea. Let me buy like $5,000 worth of dog leashes and go to China and have them ship over $5,000 worth of dog leashes and go ahead and you know put it up on Amazon so that during the quarantine, people could go ahead and buy it, right? But here's the thing, okay? I didn't know how to take pictures of like these dog leashes, right? So I remember I went to Fiverr and uh, I found somebody, uh, let me just like pull this up. Fiverr, Fiverr, Fiverr. I remember I found like a photographer actually on Fiverr, not on Upwork. And I had them really just, sh I shipped them the product from Amazon. And I was like, can you just take pictures of this and make it look really good so people could buy my physical product? And they went ahead and did it. But the thing about Fiverr is they did like something really smart. 
it's like, and this is what I want to tell you if you're on this end of things to kind of like give you some advice on what has happened actually in the field instead of just reading these blog articles that are really telling you kind of just like the vanilla, vanilla sweet tooth coding of not the truth of what you're going to experience. So I remember she sent me like a Google Doc. She was like, hey, yeah, here's a, here's like, a, what's it called? Your images, what you offered. But in the Google Doc, she literally put like her own personal email address and her uh, phone number so she could get me off of Fiverr so I could just work with her off of Fiverr. Because of course, Fiverr charges a fee to the seller and you can't like really make as much on Fiverr. You need to understand if you want to make money on Fiverr, you need to realize that it's just a search engine. You need to have like busy sa business savviness, right? You can't just live off of Upwork and Fiverr for the rest of your life because what if they take away the clients from you? So she was like really, really, really smart. She literally sent me a PDF that was like super ninja secret because I think it's against like Fiverr's terms of services or whatever. Um, but she was really smart because she was like, you know what? I'm not, I have a family, right? I'm not depending my life on Fiverr to give me gigs when anybody else could go and get a little, like I remember I typed in Amazon photography, right? Let me just pull that up. I remember I found her through one of these things here. And the thing is, every single day, the more videos are on here, of course, Fiverr is just going to get hard. It's just going to get harder and harder and harder because that's just how competition is. That's what happens when people make videos like this and more people find out, oh, wow, Fiverr is a good opportunity. Oh, wow, Upwork is a good opportunity. More people read blog articles like this and it just increases the uh, competition when it comes to you know this place. So, of course, she had to adapt to it. She literally got my email address and we just started talking to each other through email. And because of that, we created a long-term relationship where, you know, it was off of Fiverr now. And that was like the beautiful thing about it because, you know, like literally we got it from, you know, like paying her 15 bucks for like a photography to paying her $5,000 a month for like video shoots. So just imagine that you go from a $15 gig on Fiverr and then you get them off of Fiverr and then you make a deal where now she's going to make me three videos. It was like three or four videos like a month or something like that for like these like products and stuff like that. And, and it was like ridiculous, man. But of course we were like making a lot of money at that moment in time, but she was a really good salesman or whatever. But that was like the craziest thing uh, with Amazon FBA. It's because people really needed photography and like consistently. And because the videos was like a little bit more complicated and, and we were also doing advertising as well. Um, it, it was just pretty much insane. So that's one of the things that you got to realize is when you get clients from like Fiverr and Upwork, you literally need to get them off there and then start making a deal of your own. So let's go on with the next one. So we have Etsy. So let's see what they have to say about Etsy. Are you crafty? If you are artistic and are the type of person who can make custom jewelry or refrigerator magnets with the best of them, Etsy is a place to sell your products. Now for the rest of us, we might find another website to go to so we can earn money to buy things from the crafty entrepreneurs at Etsy. Here's the thing about Etsy. It is pretty hard. I know an entrepreneur that sells a bunch of stuff on Etsy and you know the profit margins are like pretty ridiculously low and not just that when it comes time to scale it's very hard because a lot of people that are on etsy are like very solo entrepreneurs right they're just one one woman or one man shop and they like kind of handmade all of these things and you just put it out there and hopefully you get a sale from it and of course etsy has to like take in um their payments as well so so it's just like pretty hard right so if we just come into here and we look at all of these things that people are selling on etsy a lot of these times it's very hard to scale these because a lot of these are really just like homemade, right? Like a lot of these are homemade. Let's look at this one right here. Hospital gown only front button. Yeah, ooh. So you can see that this is just someone that could go ahead and make these and you can see there's a bunch of reviews and they're, they're literally like making these, right? So when, when you, before you get started, you gotta also understand if yours is getting an Etsy and you wanna sell your handmade jewelry, you can make like a couple hundred dollars here and there, but when it comes to, you know, scaling and start making like a hundred dollars a day, you're going to have to figure out a lot of infrastructure. You're going to have to figure out how to actually hire employees from Upwork to do a lot of the customer service for you to handle the returns. You're going to have to figure out, uh, go in a place in Fiverr and deal with communication with them to, you know, really do certain things like helping you with your design for different products or whatnot. If you're not good at Photoshop, the thing about, you know, selling on Etsy is it's a good thing to put your foot into, but you have to have some realistic expectations of what you actually do need to create. 
if you're dealing with customer jewelry, um, custom jewelry, you're going to need to know, okay, well, what if I get a thousand orders a day? How am I going to fulfill that? Who are the people I need to meet or partner with to help me out with this? And then you're going to get to the point where, oh, maybe I don't want to sell on Etsy anymore. Maybe I want to have my own website. And then you got to ask yourself, okay, which website should I do it on? And, and there's so many different things. So remember, it's a really good way to make money online, but it will have like a ceiling of it because you're the one making the jewelry. You're the one doing all the things. You are doing everything. So how are you going to possibly gain some freedom and make money online and use it to the point where you could actually allow yourself to travel the world or to do cool things, especially like when the world opens up and whatnot. Who else is, by the way, really sick of where they're at right now and they just want to continue traveling or they want to travel or maybe this quarantine thing is like, man, I, I, if, I, if, if I could find a way to make money online, I would just go somewhere in the world and live there. I'm just really curious before we actually begin, where would you live? Comment below. But yeah, I don't know. Long term wise, you're going to have to have some big visions of this if you want to get off of just, you know, depending on making money on Etsy. Like I said, it's pretty hard to grow and you're going to need a bunch of people on your team. And if you don't know how to manage people, if you don't know how to hire people, that in essence is probably more important to figure out than, you know, posting things on Etsy. Because if you like having your time with your family and peace of mind, not only making custom jewelry, but selling it online and scaling, that's going to be a lot of hard work when you get into it. So let's look at the next one. TaskRabbit. What is this? The third one? I think it's the third one. Are you willing to get your hands dirty, weeding someone's garden or cleaning someone's garage? People come to this site to find those willing to do various tasks for them, such as putting together a bookcase or running an errand for them. Do as many tasks as you want, and this could be quite the part-time, full-time job. <laughs> This actually a lot reminds me of this YouTube channel right here. You should go ahead and check it out. The handyman easily makes $1,000 per day. Easy money. What he does. And I, I think it's just like getting over the means of like, okay, you could start off with TaskRabbit, but ultimately at the end of the day, if you have some type of service that you could already do, what if you just didn't depend on an app and you went ahead and gone and go ahead and create your business? Right. Like, as you can see, you know, all these things are really just for the beginners that don't know where to get started. But when, you know, you watch YouTube channels like this one and you figure out more ways on how the business online world has the landscape on, you start figuring out exactly what you could actually do to really make a good living for yourself. Right. So that's one of the things that I would always recommend. Start with all these apps, but try getting off of the apps so you can make consistent income with the clients that you're already dealing with. You know, at the end of the day, making money online is essentially building relationships with people in the online interscapes of the world, right? If you could build relationships with people like on a local level, then you use that t same psychology on the online level, except now like I could reach as many people as I want. Like I have two YouTube channels, right? I have this one and the second one. This one's more so about making money online and personal finance. The second one is just strictly personal development, right? I say things that I normally talk about to my friends all the time, and, and I share these ideas that I already have. So what happens when I make videos about this? I'm attracting people that are already looking for my products and services. So of course, they go ahead and buy it. Maybe coaching, maybe mentoring, maybe something. Maybe I recommend something else and I make money from that, right? But as you can see, at the end of the day, to simplify the best websites to make money online, you use these websites to maybe get your foot in the door, but your ability to build relationships with people is what's going to separate you from everybody else. What is wonder? People come to this website when they search, when, when they need research done. Wonder doesn't hire anyone, but you can apply. <laughs> you can choose to answer a question, perhaps coming from a business executive or an author writing a book. Researchers report making on average $8 to $16 for detailed answers. What? Mm, this is interesting. Great research delivered fast. How does this work? We work while you sleep, combining quality with speed and propriety process to get you what you've done pronto. I love Wonder. It's like having an on-demand personal graduate level IV. I apparently use Wonder for work-related questions and stuff like that. So essentially, you're just like someone's personal assistant, I'm guessing, at the time. I'm telling you this. You have to apply to this. You'll probably get an easier way in just like finding work on Upwork. So I guess that's an all right way. But like, like I said, I want to just demystify and just move you towards the area that's going to allow you to make money the fastest and easiest. So I still think Upwork's going to be the winner here. And then you have ThreadUp with the tagline, secondhand clothes, firsthand fun. This e-commerce company appeals to thrifty types looking to make money and sell their clutter, clutter, sell their clutter for cash. So I guess it's kind of like an online, uh, like an online goodwill. 
I guess this is a good way to make money online, but I, I'm, I'm really curious, like if you just searched on this video, if you've never seen my face, why did you actually search this video? Did you wanna just like get rid of things? Because you could easily do that in Craigslist or selling it on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or whatnot. I think ThreadUp is just kind of like the equivalent. You're not gonna make a living off of it. Like I know when I wanted to make money online fast and easy, I knew I wanted to have like a consistent amount of income. There's only so much clutter that you could go ahead and sell. Right? There's gonna be only so much clutter before you're gonna start running out of clutter and then you're gonna not have anything to sell and then you're back in the exact same problem that you had, which is how can I make a consistent, reliable income online? Which is why that's something that I don't know, I would in recommend as well as swap. So as you can see, like a lot of these things are just talking about a lot of websites that maybe might actually move you forward. Neighbor is something pretty good. You know, I talk about this all the time on my channel, how to create passive income. You either, you know, invest money you already have, you rent things you already own, you get paid for things you already do, or you start an online business. Well, neighbor is one of those ways where you just like rent out extra space in your storage house. So I guess if you wanna make money online by letting people come into you, uh, like I said, my thoughts on that is it's good, right? If if you don't have like big goals, if you if you want to make an extra five hundred dollars a year or an extra thousand dollars a year, that's still amazing, right? Like that's like a little vacation to some place, I guess. Or you know, it, we were in Chicago suburbs for the longest time, so that could pay for a couple of days at Wisconsin Dells, right? But I don't know, man. Like my definition of making money online is consistently, and not just that, but to replace my full time job. This isn't gonna replace your full-time job, as well as merch by Amazon. I talk about this all the time and I review this all the time. Why on earth would you go to some of the most competitive markets and sell things that anybody can do? Like it gets very hard. What you guys gotta realize when you wanna make money online and you go to these websites is whichever has the lowest barrier of entry, it doesn't matter how easy it is this year, it will get harder and 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 harder because Everyone is attracted to easy, free, and simple, and low barrier of entry. And because of that, it just gets harder year after year after year. And one thing that you probably don't want when you wanna find these best websites to make money online is to get yourself into another job, which is what happened to me when I was depending on all these websites. Like when I got first started, I was like, oh man, like let me just Google all the ways to make money online. And, and I literally did them to the T. I was like, let me try this and this and this and this. And because it just got competitive year after year. It blew my mind on how hard things got, which is why if you think that this is gonna be the easy route, you are in for a rude awakening because what is easy now will get harder and harder and harder throughout the road. What is hard now will get easier as life goes in. That's what I ask myself, right? I'm like, okay, what business can I create that just gets better year after year after year after year? It's one thing that you gotta realize, right? That's the reason why I pitch always you have to build an email list because that's the thing that you control. There's no competition. They're on your email list, right? You get to send them products and offers. That's why it's so valuable. And I'm actually curious why they don't even mention this and why most sites don't even talk about it, right? So here they are. Those are really all of them. What are your thoughts on that? What ways do you want to make money online? I'm very curious. Uh, let me know and make sure you don't forget to check out this free workshop we were having this week where we were teaching people to turn their passions into a full-time online business working part-time. Check it out below. Make sure you check out these two videos as well as subscribe right here and I'll see you guys in the next video.